The focus of this presentation will be on Charles Blair MacDonald. The first winner of the United States Amateur in 1895 was Charles Blair MacDonald at Newport Country Club in Rhode Island. C.B. MacDonald, as he was known, is shown here in this painting receiving the Havemeyer Trophy, presented by its donor, Sugar Magnet Theodora Havemeyer, who was the first president of the United States Golf Association. C.B. MacDonald was born to a Canadian mom and a Scottish father and grew up in Chicago. When C.B. MacDonald was 18, he left, which was in 1872, a year after the Great Fire of Chicago, to study at the University of St. Andrews. His grandfather was a member of the Royal and Ancient Society, and besides studying, MacDonald enjoyed playing competitive golf with his schoolmates and watching and learning from golfers like old and young Tom Morris. After returning to Chicago in 1875, Chicago had still not recovered from the fire and was in the midst of the first Great Depression of 1873 that lasted seven years. People were working 12 to 16 hours a day if they were lucky enough to have a job, which did not leave much time for leisure. MacDonald wrote, Certainly bankers would call in a loan if one was fortunate to get so rare an accommodation of anyone who attended to anything outside of business. C.B. MacDonald described this period of time as the dark ages of golf. But by the early 1890s, golf was on the cusp of a boom, and in 1895, C.B. MacDonald had designed the first 18-hole golf course, no doubt influenced by playing 18 holes at St. Andrews, the Chicago Golf Club. This is the current clubhouse of the Chicago Golf Club with a statue of C.B. MacDonald out front. Most of the golf courses of the time were laid out with cross bunkers, which were roadblocks like muddy ditches. C.B. MacDonald used some of the strategic design strategies associated with St. Andrews to lay out the Chicago Golf Club, which had the feel and look of a Heathland type of course. This is just another picture of the Chicago Golf Club, again giving that Heathland look. C.B. MacDonald was a wealthy man and devoted to the game. As previously mentioned, he'd won the first U.S. Amateur, but he was also one of the founding fathers of the United States Golf Association. After designing Chicago Golf Club, he came up with a set of guidelines that he would follow to design his ideal golf course, which would be National Golf Links. These guidelines are summarized here. The course must be a links type course. His ideal course would contain 18 outstanding holes. In his mind, even St. Andrews did not have 18 outstanding holes. There would be no expense spared to develop the course. When it, where nature was deficient, it would have to be improved on. This was revolutionary for that time. Dirt would be moved. Seek assistance from the best experts, including people like C.V. Piper of the Department of Agriculture, for agronomic advice. Every hole would require you to think before you made a shot, the concept of strategic design. National Golf Links on Long Island, New York would be that golf course that met all those criteria laid out in the previous slide. National Golf Links would take eight years of planning and two years of construction. C.B. McDonald would incorporate many of the classic design features found on golf courses in Scotland and England into this design. National Golf Links is representative of this philosophy. We'll talk about specific hole designs in later presentation, but as an example, this picture is the fourth hole, which is termed the Alps. The Alps was a term describing a blind shot, which required a mountain must be carried on the approach shot to the green, fronted by a deep cross bunker. The concept of the Alps type of hole was common throughout Britain. The original Alps hole, is found at Prestwick. 
To the left of this bunker was a high hill or mound that blocked the view of the second shot to the screen, which was obviously blind and must carry this bunker. C.B. McDonald, who is known as the father of golf course architecture, would only design 15 golf courses. He never charged a fee for his design work. Some people think C.B. McDonald was arrogant and such and only did courses he wanted. I kind of think he was arrogant, but liked to play golf with his friends and didn't really have to work. His partner, Seth Rayner, was not as fortunate. He had to make a living. Seth Rayner was a studious person in contrast to the volatile McDonald. He did not play golf, but absorbed everything he could from McDonald. He would go on to design courses on his own, many reflecting McDonald's philosophy, but in his own right, he was a brilliant golf course designer. Long Island, New York was a special place at this time for golf courses. Besides having national golf links, there were several prominent clubs would be built here. One such course is the Garden City Golf Club. It was originally a nine-hole course that was laid out by Devereux Emmett and some of his friends in 1899. The club was incorporated and Emmett remodeled it to 18 holes. Garden City was known for its great turf on fairways and greens. It was said Garden City's fairways were better than most golf course greens. Much of that had to do with the soil that he was fortunate to have built the course on. It was a sandy soil with an alluvial deposit on top, like the Scottish Lynx courses. Emmett was in demand for designing courses after Garden City, but he had numerous failures in trying to duplicate Garden City. He was able at Garden City to design an okay course with great turf for $2,000. He never found the same terrain again. Walter Travis redesigned Garden City Golf Club in 1908, making it a truly outstanding design. This photograph is from the USGA and was taken during the 1936 U.S. Amateur Championship at Garden City. Walter Travis was a fascinating guy who had a tremendous impact on the game of golf through the early 20th century. He was born in Australia, immigrated to the United States, when he was 23 and took up the game of golf when he was 35. Besides designing golf courses, he wrote books on golf and founded the American Golfer magazine. In contrast to McDonald, Walter Travis would often criticize British golf and often was not treated well by them, as you will see at the beginning of the next presentation.